Welcome to Local Lens, a version of what's going on in your community here in Wallingford, brought to you by WPA TV from Studio W. We are coming to you with a remote guest, and we are about to welcome, you may already see him on the screen, founder and CEO of Discover Video, a Wallingford tech company. And Rich, hi, Rich Hello. Mavriganis, how are you? Hello, it's good to see you. And you know, it's safe to do it remotely. So this is wonderful. We're just like everybody else, but I've gotten both <laughs> of my uh, shots. So pretty soon, you know, we can uh, do this in person. <laughs> Very good, looking forward to it. But tonight we want to start with uh, you giving us that elevator speech about what Discover Video does discover. So, yeah. so as the name implies, Discover Video, we're in the video business. So, you know, this is my uh, third company doing video. I started a company also in Wallingford called VBrick almost 20 years ago now. And, um, v and, and Discover Video is about 10 years old. We're located here in Wallingford, got a nice staff, and we do streaming video for enterprises. So it's not so much YouTube on the public internet as it is YouTube uh, for corporations, for schools. Um, in the state of Connecticut, most schools now have a Discover video system to do live morning announcements and video on demand and education and training. So we manufacture all the equipment and the software primarily that uh, provides those kinds of services. We also do live video on the public internet for things like WPAA and for other PEG stations and for uh, lots of churches and faith broadcasters and anybody who wants to stream live video on the public internet, you know, that's what we do. So I'm hearing that you have some plans. <laughs> I'm hearing that you have some plans to help keep us all abreast of emerging video with mobile technologies so that we can actually administer from a remote location all of these wonderful tools that that's will allow us right. to schedule, yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a it's something we call linear broadcast, right? And as the name implies, it's like TV, you know, where you turn on something and and somebody else decides what's on that channel and you just watch one after the other, right? So, you know, millennials and and most of us uh, in the modern age when we think of online video, we think of, oh, I'll watch 10 seconds of this and scrub ahead and move and change and do video on demand, which of course you can do and is great, but there's a place for linear broadcast as well, where it's a passive viewing experience. It's curated content. So like WPAA decides what's gonna be on at nine, uh, nine at night and at 10 at night and 7 a.m. one after the other. So we've developed something called linear broadcast. And what's really cool about it is just a little box. There's one sitting over there, I don't know if you can, quite see it but so you can take a little box you can uh, just put this in your office put this in your building put this in your studio and re and, and uh, decide what is going to play on it using a web interface on the public internet so no matter where you are so when you go on holiday in um, where'd you go Jamaica <laughs> uh, Costa Rica sure. France Paris you know wherever you are you can still we can still be working for WPA TV at home. How exciting for any of you us that are doing home. that! Absolutely. <laughs> uh, what? Well, this sounds like it possibly a very affordable and functional technology for the future. Uh, we don't know if we'll be forever uh, tethered to cable providers. It, our future is unknown. People are cutting the cord, as you know. So this will, in, in fact, create a internet TV channel uh, that That's will great. be forever. And so we can continue even if we're not a cable-funded operation in, into the yes. future. Yeah, well, the, the cool thing about the proposition is the box can be located anywhere. You can put this in your home. You can put it you know, in your office, you can put it anywhere and you now have a live linear TV channel. So of course, acquiring content, producing content is always the challenge, something that WPAA and all of the producers, you know, do a good job of, um, but it allows you to just air out anything and it doesn't matter where you are, you know, the advantage of the public internet. We're looking forward to actually 
bringing our producers, especially our Sunday producers, on board where they would be able to potentially upload right after their service. We do do same-day Sunday support right now, but it's very possible instead of them sending it to us and then us managing it and handling it in some way, if they have a finished product, they would be able to load it right up to the linear broadcast system. Uh, That's exactly right. Yeah. So the system will allow contributors. So, you know, you're the owner of an account, you're the owner of the system. So you can create contributor accounts. And, you know, here's a, here's a username and password for a contributor and the contributor can upload content. You then can see the content that they've uploaded and decide when, what day and time to schedule it for play out. Uh, you've been working on this, and we're starting to beta test it here at WPA TV, hoping that it will be a great advance for community television in general. What has been the most challenging aspect of creating this new capability? Well, um, scheduling, uh, you know, on, on second a accuracy. If you think about it, you know, you, you sort of wonder how do TV stations do this? It's it's mm. it's extremely complicated. Yeah. So here's a piece of content that is, I don't know, pick a number, nine minutes long, one hour and two minutes long. And how do you take that and put it into a schedule and manage content that might be before and after it and manage filling in uh, uh, your, your linear broadcast when you don't have content to be scheduled. So managing the schedule is um, is much more complicated than I think most people would imagine. I, I can imagine it. Uh, but yes, I agree that trying to figure that out, what we call continuity, that time between shows where you might have a few seconds, because it never comes in the same size. You know, broadcast really has a lot of rules around how long and if the ads are included or not included. We don't run any ads in community television. We are supported from the users for the most part with their cable fees and volunteers donations. And ads support the other kinds of television that you get. So they have the ads to insert. Well, we have to insert something as well on occasion and we will possibly put public service announcements in between. But you don't want to see eight seconds of a public service announcement when it's really a 30 second message. So trying to figure out what will fall into that space when that space is so randomly different and yeah, length is, that, is a challenge. Uh, that's exactly right. And, and we're, you know, we're delighted to work with you on, 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 on beta testing a lot of this stuff um, so that uh, we can gain your experience and you know, just make the product better for everybody. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is so different about this product compared to other things that might already be in the marketplace? Is it the mobility well, as aspect of it, being able to do it from anywhere? Yeah, I think being able to do it from everywhere, from anywhere is, um, is, is rather unique. Um, so the fact that you, this box has no local user, inter user interface, it's just a, a box and you, you find one of them, there are square holes in the wall, right? Mm -hmm. It needs an internet connection, it needs power, and that's pretty much it. The rest you manage uh, from a web page on the public internet, whether you're two inches away from the box or 2,000 miles away, it, it doesn't matter, right? You have the same, the same capability. So that's unique. It's very low cost, you know, we think that's, that's very important and that inspires lots of broadcasters to be able to put up their channel, right? Their linear broadcast channel. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that and the fact that it supports virtually any kind of video, whether it's an MP4, an MPEG, MPG, an MOV, doesn't matter, it, it, it supports them all. Um, there's a lot of PEG broadcasters, you know, here in Wallingford, we have public education government, um, but every town in Connecticut, uh, or almost every town in Connecticut has that, and they're all wishing to go to high definition, Yeah. right? Connecticut, because of the franchising, you know, you only have these uh, standard definition uh, mm -hmm. cable feeds, where with this capability, at least on the public internet, you have full HD, and the fact that the box can be located at the Comcast or Frontier head office 
that it, that might inspire them to give you HD as well because there's, there's no additional cost to them in so mm -hmm. doing. So that's kind of unique as well. We'll see how that inspiration works um, over the next few months. Uh, inspiring big corporations is a bit challenging. Uh, it certainly but, is. But, but it, it, it's certainly something to look forward to. I like the idea that you know, we just had a wonderful music series here. I think you might have caught a few called Fire Escape Sessions. And in those Fire Escape Sessions, we were streaming live from the studio through another Discover product uh, so that it was going out in HD in one source. But then on television, it was still SD. And we basically had two links that you could watch it from. And that caused some confusion. And so this is going to be one link, keep it simple, simpler for the viewer. So that, yeah. that's um, ideal. Yeah, of course, the other, I guess the other thing that's rather unique about the proposition is that your live video can come from anywhere. So, you know, if you have one of these boxes in your studio, mm -hmm. you can have a different kind of box, which is called an encoder, and you can put that encoder anywhere. It could be on your cell phone, and you could live stream from anywhere to the box, which then airs it out on cable or, or distributing it however you want. So there's tremendous amount of flexibility mm -hmm. for live broadcasts as well. Wow. Looks like we've got a lot of things to try out and explore with this new tool. And we hope to, you know, be like an Easter celebration with this. We hope to be launching, you know, shortly before or no later than Easter. So uh, we will be bringing a, the new and uh, more polished, more HD. Uh, you can see every hair on my head with HD, right? <laughs> it's, uh. Yeah, that's the problem with <laughs> HD. You know, you can't hide your uh, your your uh, anything. You can't hide anything. Your, yeah, I was gonna. <laughs> how was I gonna phrase it? Your your. Not, I don't want to say your age or my age, but your your wear and tear. Yes. <laughs> yes. It shows your wear and tear. Not that you have any. Um, well, people are going to be seeing me for the first time, possibly in this show, since my uh, experience with COVID, and uh, they they may be surprised to see that I don't have any hair, and it's not by choice; it's by COVID. So, um, the well, world, you know, the world I, has I learned changed. Ago, so, you know, <laughs> as you get older, I discovered your hair doesn't actually fall out; it it just starts growing inward, makes you goofy, wraps around your brain. Ah, oh, got it. That's why the foggy brain experience. Well, it, it is really exciting to be talking about the linear broadcast system and the potential for our community here. Uh, we are, you know, looking at our processes and how we even name the programs because now there's going to be a schedule that people will be able to look up and see what's playing and some description of the yeah. show itself, and, which and we images, did never have before. And what's yeah, and a little picture. So uh, improvements. And we uh, really appreciate that you're a local tech company. And I believe LinkedIn told me it was 12 years uh, that uh, Discover Video has been in our community uh, serving schools. And uh, yes. so I'm going to say thank you very much, Mr. Mavriganis, for joining us here in remote mode at Studio W. And we look forward to sharing what you've developed cool. for Easter. Thank you so much, and we'll, we'll see you soon. All right, take care. Bye for now. Support WPAA, too, because we couldn't do this without them. This is <laughs>